This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Now we're going to go through and look at a finance piece and the accounting treatment for a finance piece. So remember, when previously we went through and looked at the accounting treatment for an operating lease, uh, what we saw there was that the substance was of a lease, wasn't it? That there was no ownership involved. So what we did is we expense the lease payments through profit or loss straight line. Uh, here, for a finance lease, it's just that little bit different because when we go through there and look at the rules, uh, we, we know that it is a finance lease, isn't it, if we have substantially all the risks and rewards of the asset. So therefore, given we have the risks and rewards of the asset, effectively we control that asset, don't we? So in substance, it is ours. Legally, it's not ours. Legally, it belongs to the lessor. But in substance, because we have the risks and rewards, then we can treat it as our asset. So when we go through and look at the finance lease, one of the first things we'll look at is how to record the asset within our books. Once we've got the asset, we then need to look at how the asset is financed. Because in substance, what's happening is we're financing that asset via a loan. Okay, So we are using somebody's asset for a fixed period of time. We're making annual repayments on that asset. So essentially, we have use of that asset and we have the use of it, don't we, through the loan repayments. So as well as looking at the asset on the statement of financial position, we're also going to go through as well and set up a lease liability to show that in substance, we have that loan and we are going to repay it off over the life of the lease. So when we look at the accounting and, and the steps of the accounting, essentially there are four steps that we need to go through and look at. So let's go through and have a look at them that, that are there within the notes. Uh, first one uh, goes through there essentially and starts to look at capitalizing the asset. As we've said, in substance, we have control of the asset. So it is our asset in substance. So therefore, we recognize it on the statement of financial position and we recognize a corresponding liability, that finance lease payable. So what we have there is the first step is that we debit our non-current assets under the leased assets as opposed to owned and credit the finance lease liability, increasing the liability. Again, the key bit is the numerical aspect. We need to recognize it at its fair value, or if it is lower, the present value of the minimum lease payments. Again, it's unlikely you'll have to work out the present value of minimum lease payments in this exam. It's not uh, a discounting exam and a management accounting exam. It's a, it's a financial exam, isn't it? So we're looking at accounting standards, so that will be given to us within the question. Key bit that you need to pick out there if you're given the two is that you need to go with the lower of the fair value and the present value of minimum lease payments. Once we've done step one, we can go through and consider step two, which is nice and straightforward. You don't even need the journal entry, but I put it in there just in case you've forgotten it uh, from your introductory to accounting. Uh, we are going to depreciate the assets. The rules, however, here, what you need to go through and remember is that you are going to go through there and depreciate the asset over the shorter of the lease term and the useful life. So again, uh, you might lease the asset for shorter than what the asset's life is. So if the asset's life is 10 years and you lease it for eight years, you get the benefit over the eight years. So therefore depreciate it over the eight years. If we lease it for 12 years and the life of the asset is 10, then we depreciate it over the 10 years being the lower because we get the benefit for the full useful life. The remaining two years, we do not consider on the lease. Okay, so it's the first step, capitalize the asset and recognize the liability at the lower of the fair value and present value of minimum lease payments. And then the second step is to depreciate the asset over the shorter of the lease term and the useful life. If we move on to look at the third and fourth steps, the third and fourth steps are interchangeable. You don't have to do them in this particular order. But the third step that we have there is to record the interest, because if we have a finance lease liability, so effectively a, a loan on the statement of financial position, if there is a loan, we charge interest. So what we have there is we have a debit 
the statement of profit or loss under your finance costs as we increase the expense. And then the corresponding credit entry is to increase the value of the liability, essentially accruing that interest through the finance lease liability. Again, just be aware, we'll see it over in a few pages. There are two methods. The sum of digits method, which is a little bit old school and archaic, maybe something that your grandparents would have been involved in, but could crop up within the exam. And also there the actuarial method, which is much more relevant uh, to what we have in today's modern world. The fourth and final step is to go through there and actually look at the lease payments. Now, it doesn't matter whether the lease payments are in advance or whether they are in arrears, like we mentioned earlier on in the introduction. You just need to be able to record the journal entry. So there, if we make the payment, we credit the bank as we are reducing the bank asset. And the other side of the entry is the debit. We debit the lease liability as we are reducing the liability by the payment of the cash amounts. So there are the four steps. Let's just recap them and summarise them so that you're happy with them. First of all, we capitalise the asset and record the finance lease liability. Can you remember how did we go through and what value did we attribute to it? Yeah, fair value, present value. It was at the lower of the fair value and present value of minimum lease payments. Got there just about. Yeah, well done. Uh, second step was to, yep, correct, depreciate the asset, wasn't it? Uh, what was the, the, the key little rule there that we had with regards to the depreciation? Can you remember? Yeah, excellent. We depreciated it over the shorter of the lease term and the useful life, didn't we? And then the final two steps, steps three and four. Remember, we said it doesn't matter which way around you do them, uh, but you need to record the interest and then you need to record the payment, don't we? OK, the interest is an expense in profit or loss and increases the liability. Whilst the payment reduces your cash balance, we're not worried about the cash balance in the exam question. The important aspect is that payment of the lease rental reduces the lease liability. OK, so just go through, recap those four steps, make sure that you're happy with it before we then go through and start the next video and have a look there at a full on example. So let's go through and have a look at putting into practice those four steps for accounting for a finance lease so in the example that we have here i think it's about somebody called pedro uh, it wants us to prepare extract from the statement of profit or loss uh, your position statement and it wants it for the end of the first year in respect of the finance lease so it specifically said that it is the a finance lease so what we can go through and do that is we know the pro formas don't we so we can start off by grabbing a separate page of paper splitting it in two and putting the sfp on the left and the statement of profit or loss on the right uh, the steps that we have on the sfp are about capitalizing the lease so we will have is it property plant and equipment and we will also have a finance lease payable. Uh, one of the later steps, once we've capitalised the PPE, is to work out the depreciation. And then if we have a payable, so essentially in substance alone, there will then be some interest, won't there? upon that loan uh, the payment comes out of the bank i'm not too worried about the bank balance but we will be concerned with how that payment affects the finance lease payable isn't it okay so step one remember was to go through there and capitalize the lease uh, at the lower of the fair value and present value of minimum lease payments wasn't it so it says we enter into a four-year lease uh, paying five thousand dollars at the end of each year uh, the present value of minimum lease payment is at 14275 which is equal or equivalent to its fair value. So for part one, if we're looking at the property plant and equipment, if we capitalise it at 14, is it 275? And then the payable 
is at 14275, isn't it? So if you want, you can label that up as a step number one. Okay. Uh, second step was to go through, wasn't it, and depreciate the asset. So remember, we depreciate the asset over the shorter of the lease term. So the lease term here is four years and the useful life. Well, it says that we have a useful life of five years. So we can ignore the five years, can't we? Because four years is the shorter. That's where we get the benefit from. So my depreciation is my 14,275 divided by your four years. Does that give me three, five, six, nine? So I debit the expense with three, five, six, nine and credit my property, plant and equipment via my accumulated depreciation, don't I? So what you've got there is you have the second step on your PPE and your depreciation. Okay. Uh, steps three and four, uh, there's no particular order that you have to do them in. It's usually dictated by what happened within the question. Because here, what you've got is you have a payment of 5,000, which is at the end of each year. So therefore, we have payments in arrears. So we deal with step three and four in chronological order. What happens first? What happens last? Well, what happens last here is the payment. So what must happen first is the interest, isn't it? Okay. So that 15%, we are going to go through there and apply that 15% to the outstanding balance. So 15% multiplied by 14, 275 gives me, is it 2141? So I am debiting the expense through my interest. So debiting finance costs with 2141. And then I credit your finance lease payable with the 2141. That there is our step number three in chronological order. So once we've dealt with the interest, we then deal with the payment, isn't it? So here, step number four is to credit the bank. Again, I said I'm not worried about any entries to a bank account. Uh, we're more concerned about the, the other side of the entry, which is to debit the payable. So credit bank, debit the finance lease payable, which reduces the outstanding liability, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, so what you've got there, you've completed it all. The property, plant and equipment should be, is it at 10706? And is it the payable is 11416? Uh, we will see in a later session how we split that payable. Because don't forget, we're at the end of the first year, aren't we? There's still another three years left to go. So of that payable, some of it will relate to a payment next year, which is current. And then in the remaining second and third years after this year, which will be the is it non-current. But we'll, we'll touch upon that a little bit later. What I want you to be happy with is, is how to approach a finance lease with those four separate steps. If you wanted to carry on for years two, three and four, uh, then you could. And hopefully what you would see is that the payable will come down to zero. Give or take maybe a little bit of rounding. But have a go at that. See if you can work it through to the end of the four year lease and see if it does come down to zero. Uh, once you do, great. We can then move on to look at the different ways in which we allocate the interest. Here, what we've gone through and done is looked at the most common one, whereby we apply the rate of interest given to us within the question. So that's referred to as the actuarial method, whereby we use the rate that is implicit within the lease. Uh, there is another method if we do not have 
the rate of interest that is implicit in the lease to use that actuarial method. So if we can't use the actuarial method, what other old archaic method could we go through and use? But we'll save that for now. Complete that question to take it through for years two, three and four under your own steam. And then we can start looking at the allocation of the interest. Enjoy.